Good morning, everyone. My name is Oscar Urente, Community Relations Director and Network Business Development Director for Mount Sinai Medical Center. We're here today with the City of Sunny Isles Beach to present a breast cancer awareness presentation. We hope that you're doing well and that you enjoy the presentation with Dr. Katrina Rabinovich. At this time, I'd like to introduce Dr. Rabinovich and her presentation. Thank you. Good morning, I'm Dr. Katrina Rabinovich. I'm a uh, dedicated breast radiologist at uh, Mount Sinai Medical Center on, on the Miami Beach campus. And uh, today uh, I would like to welcome you to uh, my talk about uh, breast cancer screening, diagnostic and the current modalities, and also a little bit of breast imaging at the time of COVID. Uh, just one second, I'm going to share my screen with you and we will start. Can uh, everyone see my screen? Okay. Very good. Okay. So this is the first in the series of the Zoom community meetings. Uh, I call it Zoom on the Bronze. Welcome to October. Today is the first day. Uh, we will see what the month brings us. And uh, it's a wonderful opportunity to actually continue these conversations um, uh, with properly socially distancing. Uh, so uh, I want to talk to you um, about breast cancer. And uh, uh, why it is important. Uh, why uh, do we do breast cancer screening? Uh, the goal of breast cancer screening, just as any other uh, prophylactic cancer screening, is to reduce deaths from breast cancer by detecting it early when treatment is actually more effective and less harmful. 75% um, of all breast cancer happens in women with no known risk factors of family history, which is a very uh, alarming number. Uh, since regular mammography screening began in the United States in the 1980s, the breast cancer death rate has actually plummeted by 35%. Um, our goal is big or small, let's save them all. Uh, I just want to go over some facts about breast cancer screening and uh, go over some figures. Um, it is estimated that unfortunately every year there will be approximately 231,000 of new breast cancer cases in the United States and roughly 40,000 of women will die of the disease each year, which is a very significant number. A woman in the United States has one in eight risk over the course of her lifetime of being diagnosed with breast cancer. The incidence of breast cancer also increases uh, steadily with increasing age. Uh, but it has been known for years that mammography screening is able to detect a large percentage of breast cancers before they can be felt and when they're at a smaller size, earlier stage, and more likely to be curable. Uh, there has been a lot of confusion in the uh, press and in the literature uh, lately about uh, mammography screening. Um, and uh, I just want to go over some facts to help you uh, hopefully end the confusion and uh, straighten some facts about mammography and mammography screen. Uh, it has been known for many years that mammography does save lives. Uh, in multiple European countries such as Denmark and Sweden where mammography screening programs are very organized, the breast cancer death rate has been cut almost in half over the last 20 years. Uh, the most recent study from Cancer Journal uh, from October of last year involved 549,000 women and demonstrated that women who participated in mammography screening every year had a statistically significant 41% reduction in their risk of dying of breast cancer within 10 years, and also a 25% reduction in the rate of advanced breast cancer diagnosis. Uh, another uh, study published earlier in the cancer uh, journal showed that more than 70% of women who died from breast cancer in their 40s uh, at a major Harvard teaching hospitals were among the 20% of women who actually were not being screened. 
Uh, most rigorous scientific studies have shown that the most lives are saved by screening beginning uh, at the age of 40. Uh, another recent study in the British uh, Medical Journal uh, showed that early detection of breast cancer, such as with mammography, significantly improves breast cancer survival. Mammography can detect cancer early when it's most treatable and also can be treated less invasively. Uh, this doesn't just uh, improve mortality, but it also helps to preserve quality of life, which is a very significant issue. Uh, so why should we begin screening uh, at the age of 40? Um, breasts begin to change around the age of 40. It's a non-physiological fact. Uh, mammography is recommended before the onset of menopause, and some women do go into perimenopausal state in the early 40s. And statistically, incidence of breast cancer doubles at 40. So that's why 40 was chosen as the age uh, by American Cancer Society and uh, uh, American College of Radiology as the uh, age at which uh, it is recommended to start mammogram. Uh, one in six women uh, will be diagnosed with breast cancer uh, between the ages of 40 to 49, which is also a very significant number. Uh, about one in 69 women will be diagnosed with invasive breast cancer in their 40s, which is also a pretty significant number. Um, screening um, at the age of 40 results in the greatest mortality reduction, also most lives saved and the most life years gained. Uh, the years of life lost to breast cancer are highest for women in their 40s. 40% 40 of all the years of life saved by mammography are among women in their 40s. And also the largest and longest running breast cancer screening trials found that regular mammography screening cuts breast cancer deaths by roughly a third in all women ages 40 and over. Uh, so uh, starting annual screening at the age of 40 saves approximately uh, 6,500 more women's lives each year in the United States than screening every other year starting at age 40, which was one of the suggest, uh, suggestions initially for uh, mammography guidelines. So that's why we advocate of uh, starting uh, mammograms at the age of 40 and not at the age of 50. Um, the controversy started uh, in the past few years when um, United States Preventative uh, Service Task Force advised against the annual mam uh, mammography for women in their 40s. Um, these recommendations have been scientifically rejected by pretty much every major medical organization uh, with um, expertise in breast cancer care. Uh, the federal government has barred Medicare and private insurance companies from considering their recommendations when making coverage determinations for mammograms, basically as an invalid and unproven recommendation. Um, because by not getting annual mammogram starting at age 40, um, there are increased chances of dying from breast cancer and also the likelihood that young women will experience more extensive treatment for any cancers found, which is also a very significant issue. Uh, this has to do with the quality of life. Uh, the United States Preventative Task Force screening recommendations could actually endanger women because if followed, um, these recommendations will result in thousands of unnecessary deaths each year and also thousands more women enduring extensive and expensive treatment uh, than if their cancer had been found early by an annual mammography. Uh, New American Cancer Society breast cancer screening guidelines and previous data um, state that annual screening in women 40 and older saves thousands more lives each year than screening at a later age and or less frequent screening. So we do advocate for starting at the age of 40 and performing mammograms every year, not every two years. So let me go over uh, some simple scenarios and statistics of what happens uh, when we uh, get mammograms. So for every thousand of women who have a screening mammogram, um, 100 of them uh, will return for additional mammograms or uh, ultrasounds due to something that was seen in the initial mammogram. Uh, 20 out of those uh, 1,000 women will find that uh, what was seen in the imaging is likely not cancer and return to uh, six months into a follow-up uh, to keep a watch on the finding. Five out of the uh, 1,000 will be diagnosed with breast cancer. 61 women out of the 1,000 recalled will have uh, the additional imaging and find nothing wrong. 19 women out of those 1,000 will have a minimally invasive needle biopsy uh, with no complications. So the actually false uh, 
positive rates of screening mammography are very low. Um, one of the concerns that um, we've seen driving women away from mammography is concern for radiation. However, radiation encountered during screening mammogram is very, very low. And it is comparable to a radiation um, that you can receive um, while flying on a transatlantic flight. Um, mammography exposes people to 0.4 millisieverts, while the extra dose from spending just two days in Denver is 0 0.006, which is a very small dose. And uh, the average yearly background radiation is 3.1 millisieverts. Uh, so you can see that the uh, dose you get from mammography is uh, pretty insignificant compared to the background radiation and uh, living in a, a high altitude climate. Uh, this is another visual uh, representation of the radiation you get from mammography and you can see that the dose you get from mammogram is uh, pretty much the same as a flight from um, New York to Greece or another transatlantic flight and is much uh, smaller than the annual background radiation. It just helps to put things kind of in perspective. Uh, another concern um, that we've seen uh, while dealing with mammography issues is concern for thyroid radiation. Um, the radiation dose to the thyroid that um, a patient receives during a mammogram is extremely low. The thyroid is not exposed to direct X-ray beam used to image the breast and receives only a tiny amount of scattered X-rays. Um, this is equivalent to about 30 minutes of natural background radiation received by all Americans from natural sources. Uh, for annual screening mammogram from ages 40 to 80, the cancer risk from this tiny amount of radiation scattered to thyroid is incredibly small. Uh, so uh, just to summarize uh, and uh, hopefully end the confusion, uh, screening mammograms save lives. Uh, regular screenings every year make a difference. Uh, early detection reduces severity of treatment and uh, unfortunately, results aren't always right and not 100% accurate, but uh, doctors and scientists are uh, tirelessly fighting to um, increase uh, quality of the current modalities we use for imaging and improve accuracy of the diagnosis. Uh, which brings me to the other subject that I wanted to cover today is um, breast imaging. Uh, what we actually do and uh, which technologies we use um, on a daily basis. Uh, there are uh, pretty much three major modalities we use in our daily practice. This is mammography and it can be digital. Uh, it's pretty much digital in the United States and uh, major centers. Uh, it can be screening uh, for symptomatic patients or diagnostics uh, for patients with concerns. Uh, we also use adjunctive ultrasound, which can be targeted, or it can be uh, bilateral screening. And also breast MRI that can be done with or without contrast. Uh, there are some experimental modalities that are being tested and used um, that can also be uh, used for screening or diagnostics. Uh, some of the screening modalities that are not really widely used is positron emission mammography. that has not been shown to uh, be actually effective and uh, pretty much uh, very few centers around the country use it. Uh, breast specific gamma imaging is the uh, new experimental technology currently being tested. And also, thermography um, has been advertised uh, by various sources, but it's not FDA approved. It has very low sensitivity and specificity, and it is actually not helpful in diagnosing breast cancer. Uh, the diagnostic modalities that we use are PET CT, uh, this is for breast cancer metastatic or pre surgical planning. Uh, contrast enhanced mammography is being um, currently used by some centers uh, with great promise, uh, CT with contrast, and uh, some optical imaging. So let me go over mammography uh, and uh, what it looks like and uh, a little bit of uh, logistics of it. Um, it uses a low-dose x-ray system to examine breast. Mammography can show changes in the breast up to two years before a physician can feel them. That's why screening mammography is so effective. Uh, there are two types. There is digital that's pretty much used um, uh, everywhere in the um, developed world and also uh, some places in the rural areas and uh, other countries in the world, they use film screen. And you can see that the digital um, mammography has a much better uh, visibility of findings 
and resolution and the film screen and we are able to see a lot more things inside the brass than on the uh, old-fashioned film screen. Uh, we also use a very exciting new technology that's pretty much uh, been widely adopted um, uh, by the imaging centers. It is brass tomosynthesis or what it's called 3D mammography. Um, Breast synthesis, it's a method of imaging the breast in three dimensions. Uh, it has limited angle, uh, kind of CT-like uh, scan imaging of the breast, uh, where several image slices, uh, one millimeter thick, are obtained and then um, reconstructed into a, a composite image. Uh, the use of it is very helpful in eliminating overlapping breast tissue, especially for women in dense breasts. Uh, the total dose from the 3D tomosynthesis is pretty comparable to the regular standard uh, mammography and is not significantly higher. Uh, so this is a kind of a visual representation of the 3D principle of operation where an X-ray tube moves in an arc across the breast. Um, a series of low dose images I acquired from different angles and uh, reconstructed into a composite image. Uh, total dose is approximately the same as for the 2D mammogram. Uh, so this is an example of a 2D uh, on the first image and uh, selected slices from the 3D mammography and you can see uh, the finding behind the nipple that is very vague on the 2D mammogram and you can see it uh, much better on the 3D images which allow us to see um, very early uh, cancers and uh, promptly biopsy them. Uh, this is another comparison of a 2D versus 3D mammogram. There is a distortion uh, in the breast um, marked by the circle, and it's extremely subtle on the 2D, and this is much more visible on the 3D. Uh, so again, this allows us to uh, diagnose breast cancer early when it's more treatable and uh, curable. Women screened with tomosynthesis were approximately 15% less likely to need repeat screening uh, with 16 fewer repeat exams per 1,000 of women. And again, this is based on the fact that we can see through overlapping tissue much better on the 3D than we can see on 2D. Um, another modality that we uh, use and uh, we really like uh, at Mount Sinai Breast Cancer Center is breast ultrasound. Uh, Ultrasound alone is not a good cancer screening tool, but it, you know, used in conjunction with mammography. Uh, it allows us uh, to diagnose slightly more breast cancers uh, than mammography alone. Ultrasound uses non-ionizing uh, high-frequency sound waves to produce detailed images of the inside of the breasts. And uh, it helps to determine the nature of breast abnormality, uh, whether it is um, a benign cyst or it's a solid mass that needs uh, further evaluation. And also uh, we use it uh, very frequently to perform breast biopsies. Uh, this is an example of an ultrasound. A uh, um, woman had a very dense breast and a palpable finding. It was not seen on the mammography and uh, here we clearly see it on the ultrasound. And if we can see something, it means that we can biopsy it and uh, get the tissue diagnosis promptly. Um, there is uh, multiple emerging technologies currently being tested on the market, um, specifically for breast ultrasound, to improve access uh, of women uh, to the screening ultrasounds. Um, we were one of the testing sites for um, uh, uh, automated uh, breast ultrasound that actually used uh, elastography or the sound wave uh, speed of the findings to determine uh, breast uh, abnormalities that is currently being tested by the FDA and uh, hopefully will be adopted for the uh, commercial use. And uh, another very exciting modality um, that we operate daily is breast MRI. Um, indications for breast MRI are very specific. Um, MRI is used uh, in current diagnosis of breast cancer for preoperative uh, planning to evaluate extent of disease. Also for screening for high risk patients that have a high risk, uh, lifetime risk of developing breast cancer. Um, also it follows response uh, of a malignant mass to new adjuvant chemotherapy. Sometimes we use it as an additional diagnostic evaluation for inconclusive uh, uh, mammographic or sonographic findings. 
Uh, it is also used to evaluate malignancy um, in axillary lymph node with uh, mammographically occult uh, breast cancer and also uh, for evaluating women with uh, nipple discharge. Uh, it is also uh, an indication on contrast breast MRI for evaluation of silicone breast implants uh, for possible rupture. So this is an example of a breast MRI that shows um, very nicely seen uh, two very visible masses that were actually not seen well on uh, mammography. Um, additional example of uh, enhancing mass in the breast that uh, was proven to be malignancy. It was not seen on mammogram because of the very dense breast tissue. And uh, the breast MRI, it's um, an exam that is performed uh, with computer assistance where uh, a contrast material is injected intravenously and then a series of images are obtained and uh, computer performs subtraction. Uh, which allows us better visualization of suspicious findings. Uh, we also can use multiple intensity projection um, for surgical planning for surgeons to visualize um, kind of a three-dimensional uh, picture of the findings and also the blood supply. We can see um, uh, these images demonstrate a very vascular tumor which helps surgeons uh, plan uh, the approach and surgery. Um, we also use color kinetic curves that help us to differentiate uh, malignant from benign findings. Uh, this is an example of an MRI performed for implant evaluation. You can see all those uh, dark lines within the implant that indicate implant rupture. Uh, a lot of times uh, MRI is the only modality that will actually show intracapsular implant rupture and it is important to diagnose before implant ruptures completely and uh, free silicone uh, will become extracapsular. Uh, so to summarize, uh, annual screening mammogram needs to start at the age of 40. Um, ultrasound and MRI for high-risk patients are used as an adjunctive modality to mammography. And uh, we choose minimally invasive biopsy for diagnosis, which is uh, a very uh, tolerable and uh, not a painful procedure. So bottom line, early detection is the best protection. It is your life. Be proactive about your health. Uh, which brings me um, um, uh, further um, to discuss um, women's health program in Mount Sinai, um, which is a dedicated multidisciplinary network of physicians and healthcare professionals who understand uh, uh, specific uh, healthcare needs of uh, females. Uh, we have an expert physician uh, network who work together to optimize health and well-being. Uh, we have experienced dedicated uh, team, uh, teams who provide diagnosis, treatment, and support services that are tailored uh, to individual patients' um, needs and are delivered with uh, care and compassion. And uh, our goal is to offer women the most sophisticated medical expertise, latest in diagnostic technology, and the most advanced treatment options available anywhere. And um, what I want to talk about a little bit is um, also breast imaging at the time of COVID. Um, unfortunately, as we all are aware, uh, this outbreak has emerged as the single most important health crisis defining the century. Um, the collateral damage of COVID, uh, specifically on cancer treatment, is very significant. Uh, a recent analysis of delays in treatment of breast cancer by six months showed that a delay was associated with uh, anywhere from 1 to 20% uh, decrease in survival from breast cancer, uh, worse for very aggressive breast cancers and uh, in women under the age of 60. Uh, breast cancer screening using regular imaging methods saves lives by lowering the risk of dying from breast cancer, so the access uh, so with reduction of the access to breast cancer screening is uh, definitely a concerning factor. Uh, so until a cure uh, for COVID is established, breast imaging must be performed using safe practices that maximize protection of patients and staff and also minimize the spread of corona infection. So it's kind of a very fine balance. Um, balancing the needs of avoiding delays in diagnosis of breast cancer while avoiding infection requires very careful attention to um, PPE and uh, physical distancing um, and uh, vigilance to maintain these practices, as well as analysis of patient-specific risk of illness or death from postponing an examination or procedure. 
uh, American College of Radiology recommends that radiology leaders work closely with hospital systems, referring physicians and patients to coordinate safe and effective care. Uh, there have been multiple guidelines uh, that were carefully reviewed and established to ensure safe and effective re-engagement of care. Uh, Mount Sinai Breast Centers have adopted multiple safety measures to maximize care and also reduce risk to patients and healthcare workers. Um, so some of the guidelines that we use just to go over are all patients are screened for symptoms of COVID during scheduling. Um, subsequently, all patients, workers, and visitors are screened for symptoms of COVID on building entry. Um, a system awareness has been established which flags identifying patients with recent COVID. Uh, there is an established protocol for how to manage individuals who actually screen positive on building entry. Um, staff and uh, providers have been trained uh, on safe PPE usage and uh, appropriate and frequent hand hygiene. Um, we have implemented universal masking of all healthcare workers. Um, we also implemented universal masking of patients and visitors. Uh, we enabled social distancing within waiting rooms, hallways, and work areas. Um, we have streamlined patient flow to minimize unneeded contact, and they implemented methods to minimize time in waiting rooms. So the bottom picture is actually a picture of uh, one of our um, waiting rooms inside the uh, department where women uh, wait. Uh, for either additional views or their results. And you can see that um, the chairs have been marked uh, for social distancing. This is an additional picture uh, that you can see of some of our additional waiting rooms that we created and uh, the main waiting room where uh, safe social distancing measures have been undertaken. Uh, we also optimize the efficiency of every patient encounter and minimize contact and our uh, staff cleans and decontaminates patient care areas according to CDC guidelines uh, promptly. Uh, to summarize, um, Mount Sinai is an accredited center of excellence, which is very important when you go uh, seeking health care, make sure that your center is accredited center of excellence uh, by American College of Radiology. Uh, that is certified and tested for the proper use of uh, equipment and uh, imaging policies. Um, all of our uh, radiologists are fellowship trained and uh, dedicated with dedicated staff. Um, we use cutting edge technology uh, for screening and uh, diagnosing breast cancer. Uh, we provide safe and efficient uh, COVID-19 sensitive care. And uh, we also offer October special with reduced rates for screening and diagnostic mammography and uh, ultrasound. Um, very important to stress for everyone to practice self-care during these stressful times. It's very important. Uh, stress affects your health. We're in this together, so hopefully we can beat this and go through this. And uh, thank you so much for your attention. Thank you, Dr. Rabanovich. That was a very informative lecture. Um, at this time, we do not have any questions um, from our social media. So thank you again for thank you again for joining us today. Okay, thank you so much for having me.